little bit of housekeeping before the official start of the video. It's an ongoing process. I just rolled up a bunch of alley hair from the reviewing table as well. Check this. Sick. Yeah, Allie, the mountain dog, sheds pretty much everywhere. Actually, I had an itch in my back, and I used this, and while I was there, I just decided I'd roll it back and forth a couple times is what I came up with. <laughs> I'm kidding. Actually, I got this from the floor of where I'm at, so she does shed everywhere. And by the way, I have a wicked cold. I am stopped up, but the show must go on here in the Nun Fancy Project. Speaking of which, quiet on the set. Here comes the official start of the video. Ladies and gentlemen of the Nut Fancy Project, I'm going to do an old school Nut and Fancy knife review on the CRKT shenanigan. And speaking of old school, isn't that a name that sounds like it should be stuck on a record player somewhere? Kind of like this. Shenanigan, 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 shenanigan. You guys remember record players? You'd have to kick them, bump them. They'd skip ahead like three songs. Yeah. What? You youngsters don't even know what I'm talking about? Weak, man. Go Wikipedia. It. That was the old school way of playing music. Now I need a segue. Let me see. Oh, yeah. There's nothing old school, however, about the Ken Onion designed shenanigan. It is a gorgeous blade. The torchbearer for the series is going to be this aluminum handled version, too, guys and gals. This is my favorite. It's just gorgeous. It's a beautiful knife. They also make a Zytel version uh, called the PPS. Don't have one to show you. So sorry. Yeah, so let's kick it TP style. Philosophy of use. I would say tactical blade. Emergency defensive knife if you need it. Three and one quarter inch blade. So that, in my mind, is marginally big enough and wide enough for tactical use. Mm -hmm. Heaven forbid, like I always say. Uh, there's some other elements in the knife that also make it suitable for that. I'll cover them as we go down uh, the points here. Also, you could EDC it, I guess. Kind of a big blade for that, though, don't you think? No? I know. There's lots of guys and gals out there that like the larger blades for utility tasks. Not me. Generally, I like something a little bit smaller. Let me see what I have on the table. Oh, how about this? UK pen knife in foliage G10. Sick. Yeah, that's basically a Delica, a non-locking, full flat ground Delica blade, more or less. Great size. This is my EDC knife I prefer. Uh, collectible? Eh, could be. I don't know if a lot of people would be collecting this one. I just, I don't know. Those are the big POUs as I see it. By the way, when we're talking about POU size and weight, four ounces. That makes it relatively lightweight for the amount of blade that you're getting with a shenanigan steel and blade shape. It's honest to goodness, Japanese produced OS 8 steel. And CRKT tells us it comes from a company called Akuto. Muchas gracias, fellas. What? Wrong language? Okay, uh, arigato? I'm just messing around some more. Uh, OS 8 is an excellent steel. Love it. It's a, well, how do you say, medium to high quality stainless steel, Japanese produced, of course. Good rust resistance, kind of. It will rust out on you if you're not careful with it. Holds a good edge, takes a good edge when you uh, have to resharpen it. And by the way, out of box, this thing came very, very sharp. I've been EDCing this for the past couple months, so I have used the blade. It may not be quite as sharp as it was to begin with, and I haven't sharpened it yet. Um, and look at that relief edge, by the way. Pretty much perfection. And the edge strikes me as a polished edge. It has no tooth at all. It's just a really polished sharpness. Let's see how, uh, if I said that, polished sharpness. This is cardstock right here. That's pretty nice. Way sharp. Very impressed with it out of box. Good job, Columbia River Knife and Tool. Love the OS 8 steel. I have no issues with it at all. Blade shape is wicked. Big old unsharpened swedge on the top there. Like that. Let's take a look at the tip, its properties. Nice and strong tip, it looks like. Not too delicate. Nice belly there. A little bit of organic curvature here as we come towards this portion of the blade. Uh, I think it's hollow ground, yep, from that portion. So it's not FFG. Whatevs, no big deal. This one says first production on it, by the way. Ken Onion signed. Well, trademarked at least. There you go. 
That's what the other side of the blade looks like. Love the blade shape. I think it's a good penetration blade too. I didn't test that, but I've tested lots of other blades, as you've seen here in TMP, and they do just fine. That means it stabs very well, slices and dices very well. Great job on the blade shape, shape and love it. Speed. This is a Tang Flipper, the shenanigan. Non-assisted opening. There are no thumb studs, as you can see. So you just do that. Comes out very fast. I find it to be a very well-balanced blade. Very well. And I think the lockup is very solid. No movement left and right, up and down. And no, I didn't have to tweak it at all. You could if you had to. Just if you had to. Great job on that, though. When we talk about strength, though, this might be a little bit of a downside. It's kind of a very thin 420... J stainless steel liner. Okay, and that's what's locking at the rear of your tang. You know, some guys call that a strip lock, I think. So it's actually inset into that aluminum handle. So not really a liner lock, but a strip lock, if you want to call it that. Same concept, though. You can see the engagement surface right there. Uh, I think it would be adequate, barely, for the tactical role. Definitely adequate for EDC roll. Why do I say that for emergency defensive? Because in case you miss and strike something, the last thing you want is to have that knife fold upon your hand. Cutting your tendons, your fingers, stuff I've talked about, unfortunately, uh, lots before. Um, I didn't test it, not going to. But, I mean, if one of you guys have this knife, you want to hard test it, you are a subscriber to the Nut and Fancy Project, uh, yeah, tell us what your experience is, dudes. Uh, but I think strength adequate for the roles I identify. Handle material. It is 6061 T6 cold forged and bead blasted and clear coated aluminum. Uh, my understanding is that the, that is the natural color of the aluminum. I have heard folks complaining about the wear and tear on it over time. That it gets beat up and looks kind of bad over time. I didn't experience that because I didn't need to see it long enough. Or hard use it long enough. You know what I say about that? That's just... I don't know, extra coolness, Boba Fett factor on your knife when it gets worn and torn like that. If you're just EDCing it and using it as a utility knife, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I don't see a big deal about it. Let it get beat up. You know, buy another one and save it if you want to collect it and make it nice. I'll show you some alternatives here, just, you know, kind of off the cuff alternatives. Handle construction, this is a huge plus. And this will kind of jump down to ergonomics. Awesome jimping on the back. None on the blade. There is no thumb ramp on the blade. But notice how the top of the handle flares up. And this is very sharply milled, at least in the aluminum version, jimping. No slippage at all. Look at my thumb. When I press down hard, it basically makes the opposite imprint. You know you have good jimping then. Uh, it probably tells me I got soft thumbs as well. Yeah, whatevs. Uh, rubber inserts there on the side of the handle. Uh, that is good and it's bad. The good thing is, is it does give you a little bit more comfort in the handle, provides some, I don't know, interest, visual interest to the looks of the blade. Here's the bad. I find that it really retains a knife perhaps just a little too well. And that's why the PPS version might be better. Because in the pocket I found that this combination, this very tight pocket clip, which is a good thing, but the rubber insert underneath really locks that blade in. And that is a consideration when you're talking about emergency defensive knife. You've got to get it out quick, right? Uh, this might be a little bit slower than you think it'd be just because of that setup. So overall, the ergonomics, however, on the handle, because of the jimping and the curvature fitting your hand, here's reverse grip if you want to do that, are pretty much excellent with that one caveat. PPS version, again, might be just a little bit better. Clip design. Dudes, I'm totally cruising on this review, by the way. A little bit of wear and tear over time, as you can see, and it wore great. No Wizard of Oz issues. I'm talking about goofiness. Is it spooned out too much where it's going to catch on your car, scratch your car? Well, any clip that flares out like this will do that. As you walk past a car or something, you always take it from me. Watch what you're doing, man. If you're in close quarters, you're going to take some paint off. Um, but it didn't bend on me. It holds, like I said, very well. Unfortunately, as is the CRKT tradition in many blades, tip down. I do not care for that orientation in most blades. I really wish they'd give us an option to carry tip up, but CRKT, in some ways, I don't know, treats us like little kids and they don't trust us carrying tip up. I'm just saying. So that's kind of bad. It's black Teflon coated, stainless steel, I think. And again, hard extract from the pocket, durability. 
I didn't do any hardcore testing with this knife. I'm talking like cardboard tests or like that. And I talked about the thinness of that strip lock. You'd have to try it out. Uh, I think the durability will be adequate for any reasonable use. Talking about the handle, how it may look kind of bad. And by the way, I didn't mention this. It is a very fast knife to deploy. I did say that. But phosphor bronze bushings, I think, are in there. And the pivot screw has an O-ring on it as well. So there's kind of some upgrades here to the construction of the knife. Durability, from what I know, right now, subject to change. Awesome. Where are we at? Value and options. I'm going to cruise through this thing. Well, let me see. Uh, Value-wise, I'm going to first throw up, not throw up, throw out there. Cold Steel American Lawman. New version. Okay, this is about the same price. $62, 4.6 ounces. This is also Aus 8 steel. Aus 8A, I think. Yeah, that's a great knife. Stronger. This one's way stronger than that. If you're looking for a hardcore tactical, you know, performing knife. And by the way, I didn't say the value on this. Around $51. Look in the upper right where I recommend for you to go check, see if they have it. Buy it quick, though, because sometimes I recommend these blades at those sources and they sell out. Um, $51. So this is ballpark, and this is more expensive. At least where I got it, $62. A little bit heavier. Great knife, by the way. How about this? I haven't seen this for a while. <clears throat> See, I told you I'm stopped up. Kershaw Blur. This is a 1670 in the old steel. $55, 4.2 ounces. That's a great looking blade. Look at that. It's a combo edge. It's one of the few combo edges from any knife company that I like. The Kershaw. Nice shallow serrations. By the way, this comes in a combo edge too. And I generally don't prefer the combo edges in CRKT. Maybe the VEF serrations might be uh, an exception to that because I love those VEF serrations. Serrations are cool. And last but not least, check this. Oh, yeah. In the project, getting tested. New version, Colt Steel Voyager Large. This is even cheaper than that uh, shenanigan. Big knife, five ounces. They've kind of abandoned the lightweight formula on the Voyager and made it into a hard use tactical knife. Triad locking mechanism, $35, five ounces. What great value. There's a couple alternatives to the shenanigan. Um, but for looks, uh, I would say this is out of the running. I would say that's out of the running. Between the blur and this, looks, I don't know, neck and neck, really. I'm just talking about second kind of cool here. Okay, I think the shenanigan is a very handsome, almost organic looking blade. Uh, you know, Ken Onion does a lot of those. Really beautiful designs of flowing lines. I think the shenanigan is right in line with that. So that gives it, in my estimation, a very high cool factor. Gorgeous blade. However you want to use it, you want to put it in a tactical role. EDC are just plain collect and fondle it. Absolutely great uses for our knives. That's an unfancy old school review. I gotta go to bed. I'm tired. See ya.